Even the most pessimistic global warming alarmist weather forecasters did not predict what is going on in Appalachia right now through the Carolinas and Tennessee. Something is going to change after this, and people are asking a lot of very difficult questions. Now, I'm sure a lot of people in my audience already have their mind made up about what this is really about, and there is definitely a case for it. No food, no water, no gasoline, no internet, definitely no voting for sure. But something was said in Pennsylvania a few months ago that I think a lot of people in the audience would like to hear. Many probably have heard it but forgot about it. It's something that Donald Trump said that made me think at the time, gosh, that's a strange thing to say. But now that we see this, it makes perfect sense. It makes absolutely perfect sense. Now, real quick, battlefield of the mind. It's one of those things. This is a hard thing to divorce yourself from emotionally. When you see all these pictures of all this suffering, it's very difficult to not allow yourself to get emotional about it and look at the thing critically and make a proper assessment. If you'd like those tools, tactics, and techniques, they teach them in the military, and that's what I did. So I'm passing this on so that people can see clearly through an event like this beyond their emotions. It's only one US dollar per month over there at Patreon. Even less, if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days. The link is down in the description. Just scroll down to the description and you will find the links to all the different levels that are available. God bless all of you who have already signed up. we got a lot of folks over there and we've got a brand new video, a couple days old. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos over there that have never been seen on YouTube. Some of them wouldn't even be allowed on YouTube. They're that controversial. Now, let's get right to it. What did Trump say in Indiana, Pennsylvania that is tied to this? Well, let's listen to the man in his own words. Hey, folks, you know, it's interesting. Christians, we got to get the Christians to vote. You know, I don't know what it is. Relatively, they don't vote a lot. They go to church and they love church and that's great, but we got to get Christians, evangelicals, we have to get them out to vote. We have to get gun owners. You know, gun owners don't vote. They don't vote. We have to get them out. The NRA gave me their total endorsement they have every time. Total, complete endorsement. But they vote at levels that are very low. You know what it is? It's probably rebellion. They're rebelling. But there's nothing to rebel about. You have to get out. If we had Christians voting in full strength, we couldn't lose. If we had the gun owners voting at full strength, we couldn't lose. We have to get gun owners because your gun... Now, I thought that was a very strange thing for him to say. Christians and gun owners don't vote in high enough levels and more of them need to head to the polls. Now, some are probably asking, but Florida Maquis, what does that have to do with what's going on in this area? Well, I brought up a map that I'd like to share of the path of this hurricane. And it went through an area of Florida, that northwest Florida here up near the Panhandle, that is very, very, I guess what Donald Trump would call rebellious. There are a lot of people in that region that have absolutely no use for any government of any kind. Left, right, otherwise, they're just checked out. And I don't blame them. I'm not castigating anyone. I'm not judging anyone. But when you look at the path it took through Georgia, South Carolina, East Tennessee, Western North Carolina, up in this area, Kentucky and Southern Virginia, all this area here, these people, if you could characterize them with two descriptors, they would be gun-owning Christians. They would be gun-owning Christians. And only a few months ago, we had a presidential candidate say these, these people don't vote. They don't vote in high enough numbers to, to, to make a difference that, you know, we would never know. He went on, a lot of people glossed over that part because he went on in that same speech and said that, uh, 
you know, if you vote this one time, you'll never have to vote again. If you, which a lot of people thought, whoa, wait a minute, what does that mean? And I see it down in my comments section all the time about, you know, selected, not elected, you know, nobody, it, it never matters. If it mattered, they wouldn't let you do it and all this stuff. And that's the group of people more so than anywhere else, anywhere else in the country. Now, people are like, well, they're doing it to flip the election. They're doing it to flip the election. I brought up this map, this electoral college map that you can get 270 to win, 270, small T-O-W-I-N, all together, no spaces, 270win.com. And you can put together all sorts of different scenarios to see who would win, the Democrats or the Republicans, with, based on what state. Now, even in this particular scenario, I have given four of the battleground states to Mr. Trump. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. I gave them all to Donald Trump. And he still comes up two electoral college votes short. That's why everybody knows it's coming down to Pennsylvania. Now, what if, let's just war game for a minute. What if the Waltz Harris campaign has knowledge that they can't win Pennsylvania? They can't win Pennsylvania. What would they have to do to still win, to get enough electoral votes? Let's go ahead and put this, this Pennsylvania in the column for Trump. That makes it 287 to 251. They need to flip two states. You ready for this? Georgia, North Carolina. See, North Carolina by itself doesn't do it. It makes it close, but it's still 271 to 267. Now you're saying, but wait a minute. Flip Georgia? How, how, how does it flip Georgia? Well, you see, how does this work? If the storm hit, you know, blue, it, wouldn't it knock out as many blue voters in Georgia as it would... If there's no voting, even the blue voters can't go to the polls, suppose the red voters. You have to look at the map closely, the other one that I brought up here. That storm missed Atlanta. Everybody was warning, oh my God, Atlanta's going to get killed, Atlanta's going to get killed. And this, this, then this thing turned just to the right, and it missed Atlanta, where all the blue voters are, completely. But it still took out all of southern eastern Georgia, where all the red voters are. And these people, even on a good day, were not likely to vote in a federal election. Because what did, and you don't believe me? Don't believe me? Ask Donald Trump. Ask Donald Trump. If you want to talk about the panhandle of Florida, southeastern Georgia, western South Carolina, western North Carolina, and eastern Tennessee, southwest Virginia, eastern Kentucky, these are all Christian gun owners that he says don't vote. Now, some of them, even if they wanted to, aren't going to have the opportunity to. That could be just the edge they need. That could be just the edge they need. They can give Trump, they can give Trump Pennsylvania and let him, and let him take Pennsylvania. But if they can tip the needle on North Carolina, because all of these Western North Carolinians not being able to or completely disillusioned with with government, flip that. And Georgia, meaning Atlanta's fine where all the blue voters are, but all the red voters just have said, you know what, enough's enough. I think that's why you're seeing Trump in Georgia today. Now, there's very few other scenarios where you could, you could see anything go one way or the other. I just can't see Wisconsin. And even, you know what? Even if Trump would get Wisconsin, let's say he would lose Pennsylvania, he would win Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, but he loses North Carolina and Georgia because of this, they still win. It's a squeaker, 273 to 265. But this will be all they need. I don't think they have any chance of... South Carolina is too deep, deep, deep red. They don't have enough big... They don't have enough blue voters in South Carolina to make a difference. You know, and there's there's an argument to be made about, about Tennessee, too. Because Nashville has a whole bunch of liberals in it. Nashville and 
Chattanooga and Memphis have a lot of blue voters. And if they can cut out all these Eastern Tennessee, all these conservative voters, they could get Tennessee too. And if I've, that would make it a, you know, even if you would give, somehow give Michigan to Trump, that would make, that would still just make it a tie. 269 to 269. And that would come down to one of these Nebraska congressional districts. I wonder if that's why, why Trump was so worried about what was going on up in Maine with their uh, splitting congressional districts. Because that one vote one way or the other. That winner take all thing. So, just saying, there is a lot of stuff going on right now. And of course, as always, election season is during football season. And how many of you have noticed that the football games are all just saturated with Kamala Harris ads? You see, this is, and I'm not denigrating, I'm not cascading, I'm not even disagreeing. This is from the series Colony. And we're going to do a whole other video on something going on right now that one, that even yet more confirms that the series, not the colony, the series is just one word, Colony, had the right idea about what's coming. Men who trust power tend to have short life expectancies. And... The way to control a democratic society isn't through fear, it's through distraction. So, once again, tactics and techniques, mind control. I mean, I couldn't believe it when he said it. September, um, well, this this post is from 23, but, from the, but what they're showing here is from a long time ago. Indiana, Pennsylvania. So, anyway, I will leave it there. Battlefield of the Mind, join us. Love to have you. Just a dollar. One dollar a month, that's it. Believe me, the videos are far worth more than that. Would love to have your support. Could sure use it these days. God bless everyone. Pray for those up in the Appalachians. Pray for me. Pray for each other. Lift each other up. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.